Hey there, we're going to be introducing some fundamental concepts of probability using a simple example. So that example is uh, given a collection of coins. So we have a certain number of fair coins and a certain number of two-headed coins. What is the probability that we drew a fair coin if we see a given number of heads as our outcomes? So in order to, to attack that problem, we're going to discuss these fundamentals. Uh, conditional probability, Bayes rule, and total probability. We'll show you real quickly how they're derived, and we're going to assume that you have a certain level of, of set theory knowledge. So first, just looking at the, the intersection operator, we have that A intersect B is equivalent to B intersect A. And so once we write down the definition of conditional probability, A given B is how this is read. Um, once we have that, we can write the, the probability of the intersection of these two events two different but equivalent ways using the definition. So probability of A given B times probability of B and B given A times the probability of A. Um, so this is going to be important in deriving Bayes' rule. So Bayes' rule is just simply equating these two, equation, these two terms um, and then solving for the probability of A given B in terms of the probability of B given A and the probabilities of the separate events. So we use that later on and we have total probability and this A and B just consider them separate. Here we're assuming that there's a collection of events, B sub I, that form a partition of our sample space. So um, <coughs> we can intersect our event A with the individual um, B sub I's and these two terms are equivalent. So once you take the union of these events, they're mutually exclusive. Um, we can take the probability of A and express it in this fashion where we have the probability of A intersected with the B sub I's. Now that we have it in this form, we just use the definition of conditional probability again to express each one of these intersections as a conditional probability and the probability of the conditioning event. Okay, now we're going to use some of the concepts that Tyler just reviewed to solve this problem. So we are, we have M fair coins and two headed coins. We withdraw one of these coins at random and flip it K times. H sub I will be the event of getting ahead. E sub K will be the event of getting K heads in a row and F is that you have the fair coin. So we are asked to solve for the probability that you have the fair coin given that you've seen K heads in a row. So the first thing we're going to do is use Bayes' rule and we can flip these conditional probabilities around and we can start looking at what's the probability that you get k heads in a row given you have a fair coin. That's a lot easier to think about. So let's write it out. Okay, so the numerator, we see we have the probability of getting k heads in a row, given you have a fair coin, times the probability you have a fair coin. That should be easy to solve, and we'll do that shortly. The denominator asks, what's the probability of getting k heads in a row? This is more subtle because it depends on if you have the fair coin or not. So we're going to use the law of total probability. Let's draw a diagram to see how this works. So in our sample space, you can get k heads in a row, and you can either have the fair coin or you can't. So that will form a partition of the sample space. And you can see if you add the intersections of ek and f and ek and f not, that will you get you will get the probability of ek. Let's write that out.
Uh, we could take this one step further using conditional probability and express both these terms in with conditional probability. Let's write that out. All right, so now we've expressed the denominator in terms of conditional probabilities that are much more intuitive and easier to think about. Uh, so what's the probability of getting k heads in a row given that you have a fair coin or not a fair coin? Those are independent events now. So let's go ahead and solve for that. All right, so one more time, we used Bayes' rule and then the law of total probability to express this term as all terms of conditional probabilities given you have a fair coin or you don't have a fair coin. And now those are independent events and we can solve for those. All right, this first term is what's the probability you get K heads in a row given you have a fair coin? Those are independent events. So it's one half to the K power. What is the probability that you obtain the fair coin? Well, every coin that you choose is equally likely, so that will be m over m plus n coins. All right, the denominator is now two terms. Uh, this first term is identical to the numerator, the probability that you get k heads in a row given a fair coin times the probability of obtaining the fair coin. Let's write that out. The second term is the probability that you get k heads in a row given a two-headed coin, which it will be one, happens every time times the probability that you initially choose the two-headed coin. There are n two-headed coins out of m plus n. Each outcome is equally likely. So now we have an expression that tells us the probability of having a fair coin given k heads in a row as a function of flips, two-headed coins, and fair coins. Uh, let's simplify this a little bit. Okay, uh, we are asked to solve for m and n uh, given the probability, uh, given this conditional probability. So let's express this in terms of the given probability. Uh, after some algebraic manipulation, which you can verify. And just for clarity, okay. So now, given a probability, a conditional probability, 
uh, we can obtain our ratio n over m. And Tyler will solve those four problems for you. And for brevity, we'll be using this notation. Thank you. All right, so we just derived an expression for the ratio of unfair coins to fair coins in terms of this probability that we have a fair coin given we see a certain number of heads in a row. Um, and the number of heads there is, is the k in the expression. So we have four examples here, and what we want to do is find the smallest number of fair and unfair coins that will give us these probabilities. So our first case is the probability of fair given two heads in a row, and that's going to be equal to a fifth. We have the probability of uh, fair given one heads in a row, that's equal to a half. Probability of fair given two is equal to a half. And the probability of fair given three heads in a row is equal to a sixth. So it's, it's pretty much straightforward algebra to plug into the expression at this point. We have our, our probabilities and we have the number of flips and those are our two variables. So um, again, we want to look at the number of coins, the minimal number of coins that give us that ratio. So what we can do is look at irreducible fractions for rational number, or rational fractions, and we can, once we finish plugging into this expression, solve for a value, just make sure that the numerator and denominator are co-prime, and we know that we've achieved that. So for A, we have one minus a fifth over a fifth times one half squared. That comes out to one. So when our, our irreducible fraction here is one over one, and that's, um, obviously one fair coin and one unfair coin. For part B, we plug in our new values and we have one half. So in this case, um, again, they're co-prime, but uh, our unfair coin is still one. Our number of fair coins is two. So for part C, we plug in again, we end up with one fourth. Again, one unfair coin, four fair coins. And for part D, we end up with five eighths. So we have five unfair coins and eight fair coins.